I'll use your transfer potion. Um, so actually, Xenoblade, um, I'm playing with Link's Xenoblade Chronicles right now, um, on my own time. Xenoblade Chronicles is actually a pretty good comparison for some of this, like with the, me uh, Mechanus enemies, where you have to activate a special ability to be able to, for your regular party members to be able to damage them. Um, that is how this game handles the undead. Um, or rather I should say... Xenoblade handles the undead the way this, or handles the, the mechanics the way this game handles the undead. Because, you know, this, this is a PlayStation 2 game. This game came first. Uh, pretty early one, too. Um, party members got a bunch of spells out of it. Um, yeah, certain bits about this will also, if you've watched a lot of fantasy anime and stuff, may seem somewhat familiar because Wizardry is one of those anime series, one of those video game series that hit it big in Japan in the 1980s and basically kind of changed everything like Dragon Quest like Wizardry of Dragon Quest basically were like totally two of the biggest sea changes in introduction of anime of, of um, these sort of fantasy tropes alright um so Okay. Well, even then, um, oh, when that pops up, um, so I'm I'm playing using a wireless controller. Um, I have a PlayStation Four con uh, Bluetooth to um, PS2 adapter. It sometimes flakes out like that, which is slightly frustrating. But this is a turn-based game, so it's less of an issue. Uh, so here. All right, I think we'll get Sarah mastered in this spell, which is good to good to do because we'll need to buff a lot of priority members coming up. Um, you're charged. Ah, uh, well, yeah, like a lot of isekai anime borrows a lot of t concepts from video game Japanese RPG video games and that sort of thing. Um but those in turn draw love them draw inspiration from if they're not drawing from Dragon Quest, they're drawing from Wizardry. Um like you take the structure of Sword Art Online, for example, um where you're trying to battle your where where the character where the, the, the players are trying to battle their way up a what is essentially a mega dungeon tower thing. To get to the top in order to complete the goal so they can get out um that is the wizardry dungeon concept any other anime story that does this as well, where you have that as well is kind of drawing cues from wizardry um tower of god from this season same sort of thing um Ooh, new one. Uh
All right. Since that used all of the casters on the agility, let's put that on Kyo and boost that spell a little further. Alright, that's what we got for now. And let's... I have a shield to have identified. Yep, uh, the tower in Mother 3. Um, let's have you hold it. Oh, no. Uh, oh, none of you can use it right now, so I'll just sell it. Okay, I can sit back later if I need to. Actually, let's go check see if there are any side quests I can pick up while I'm running around. Alright, so I still need to get... Um... Paralysis, get, definitely get a character paralyzed. Do that, tw do that quest. All right. I'll say the useful note that makes this wizardry a little more different than other ones is the way the environments work is significantly different. Um, I kind of mentioned earlier that regular wizardry and wizardry clone games have each dungeon level is just a flat basic level, where this one has these three dimensional and they'll wrap three dimensional spaces and they wrap all over each other and that sort of thing. Um, Combined with the use of shortcuts. The other thing here is, I like guess you notice this opening area, you have more spaces that feel, that are physically large or open in them. Even if they're like some of the more enclosed areas like later, uh, uh, we, like we saw on the second level, we had the big kind of open gap in the middle of the room. It's still... Oh, didn't, that, that didn't drop them. Okay. Okay. Oh, well. That's, that's on me. But yeah, the wizardry games, or this game like other wizardry games, makes big steps to make rooms and environments feel like more involved. There is an overarching plot to this game. Um, some great calamity caused uh, damage uh, and devastated this kingdom several years prior, and we're trying to find out why. Something in the dun in this dungeon is explaining why. Um, well, has the has the information on why, 
and you got to explore the dungeon to find out. It is... One other thing here is this, is this game, narratively, is probably closer in presentation to a Dark Souls, or Demon Souls as well, where you'll get bits and snippets of dialogue that spell out portions of the plot as you make your way through the game, but also a lot of this is also through you explore the dungeon, you look around, and what you find in the dungeon kind of gives you some environment you walk through, give you some information about where you're traveling through. Um, One other major difference of like a wizardry style clone, with the exception of Etrian Odyssey, um, where for those games it's like, oh, this is the, um, we're in the fire dungeon now, or we're in the ice dungeon now, or we're in the, we're exploring a pastoral field now. Like with Class of Heroes, or, um, um, Demon's Gaze, or that sort of thing. Um, and this in Etrian Odyssey is like, there is, we're in a set environment, and it's going to change over time. And how it changes influences the environments we're traveling through, but also the, um, we're learning something about the story. So like, this is the, like, we're, we're starting out in the ruins of the old castle. Um, and so, you have a combination of the passages that were underneath there, and then we get these larger kind of stone chambers and that sort of thing, and then the next section down that we've gone through is the jail of the prison. Friendly, so we will leave them alone. Now there's also some magical stuff going on. Um, I mean, beyond, oh, there's monsters and demons and that sort of thing in here, or monsters and undead and that sort of thing down here. Um, there's the Reaper, which, how have you caught that bit? Um, with the Reaper, if it possesses one of your party members, if they die, they die for, they are permanently killed. You cannot resurrect them at the temple in town. Um... And, and we've been told there's a couple levels further down where the dungeon will reconfigure itself each time you travel through it. Yeah. I think it's also some of these like monster bits that these monsters drop can also be used as items as well with effects in combat. Okay, so get down to level. Uh, 
And so I got the Booger Birds called, so I think I actually have everything I need now for the, uh, for that one vellum. So next time I head back to town, I can craft it. Probably the big difference, all the big difference between this wizardry game and other ones is spellcrafting. Um, in the, in most wizardry and wizardry clone games, when, um, you level up, you just get your spells. You just learn them. Um, there are exceptions, like with some of the, uh, for, for the more overtly D&D &D inspired games, you, you loot spells. Uh, you, you find spells as loot, but um, on, in addition to when you level up, or you, like, you find a wizard spell book and you scribe a spell and that sort of thing. Um, in this game, on the other hand, the way you learn spells is you either find wounds in the dungeon, which you can then um, have characters learn the spells from that rune, or you craft them using monster bits. Yes, you're then undead. Okay, here we go. Alright, mutual action, defend, defend. I think you can deal damage. Um Okay. Wait, no. You can use Dispel <clears throat> to kill one group of undead. Okay, so Kyo, so Kyo's blade is not magic. All right, the, the catch with the with crafting the spell system like this is on the one hand, you can just level up character spells without too much issue. But on the other, uh, it means that leveling up the spells of your party members is basically dependent on what monster bits drop. I don't have to kill all of them, but it's enough to soften them up. If I do then two rushes and drop them all, but that's okay.
and leave you alone. Oh, another other thing that this well, this game has an alignment system. Um, it's base. It is a fairly basic one, just good, neutral, or evil. Um, second batch of monsters. Okay, uh, these are undead. Okay, so just front row. Just going to defend. Actually, I haven't checked to see if the um, magic dagger works yet on undead, or the, the dagger is officially magic to hurt undead. Let's check that. Okay, it does. All right. So that means... I can save spells for the general undead. All right, so I need to raise the drawbridge of that lower level. Ah, okay, so using the uh, Rotten Meat item lets you, lets you damage undead with your attacks. Okay. Okay. All right. Unidentified boots. Okay, third floor. All right, let me go look at the map for a second because I need to put this together. The thing is, I gotta do in a certain order. Okay.
plow through a hole that hole in the wall. Okay, so this gets complicated because we got the wizard. Um Guard. Spell cancel, you two. Um, and then cast a spell on the kobolds. Got one of the kobolds, okay. And the priest ran. Double slash the highwayman. We're also going to attack the highwayman. Uh, well, again, back to Cobalt. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.